Hey guys, how you doing? Some blowers here again. Today I sold my uh, Murray riding mower for uh, good money, 425. Picked it for uh, 40. Sold another push lawn mower for uh, 70. It was over there on Craftsman. I got it for 10. Today I'm doing a trade with somebody. Dude is going to give me a go kart for my. Uh, I don't know what you call this <laughs> it was my wife's um cruiser bike and she never rides it didn't fit on any of my other um bikes so i got this motor off of ebay for like uh 89 and i said uh hey can i put that motor on your bike she's like yeah okay but don't let the kids ride it it's dangerous Anyway, I think I rode it like four or five times around the block. It's kind of fun, but it's really just taking up room in my garage, and I don't really ride it, you know. So uh, we're going to do a trade. I'm going to trade this for that um, go-kart. Go-kart doesn't run right now because it needs a pull cord, but <laughs> I can fix that, no problem. Anyway, he wanted like uh, $450 for it. I actually spent... Only $89 for the motor. And I think I spent $99 on the whole bike. I think I got it from Walmart or something. So uh, I'm making out on this deal. I don't know why he wants this, to be honest with you. It's a relief because I didn't know what I was going to do with this thing. Anyway, I'll show you the uh, go-kart when he shows up. So I just did the trade. It's, uh, I don't know what it's called, but... Uh... It's like a yurf dog, you know? Tecumseh engine. Only thing wrong with it, he says? Pull rope is out. This is for the battery, I guess, for the lights. Two seater for little kids. I think that's the uh, brake and the gas. Steering is a little stiff. Got this roll bar there. Pretty cool. Always wanted a go kart. Pretty good shape. Definitely worth it for me because uh, he actually gave me 50 bucks on top of that trade. So not only did I get rid of my bike that I never uh, did. So as it rolls. Clutch spins. I've actually never had one of these before. It'll be interesting to work on them. But uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, of course, I've said that before. I mean, look at that Tecumseh um, rope um, recoil starter. Looks almost just like the uh, lawnmower ones. Problem is, this is riveted on there, you know. Um, unless I could take off the gas tank and this assembly and just take the engine cover off then I would have access to the rope without taking the rivets off. I'm kind of thinking that. However, it does look a little cumbersome to get that off, you know. Quite a lot of things attached to it. But you see what we definitely need here is, I don't know what that wire is for, could that be for the kill switch or something? It's very... Oh, that's a stick. <laughs> it's a branch. But look at this uh, carb. That primer bulb's had it. Actually, it might be okay, but it's not very elastic, you know. But uh, you guys have seen this uh, carburetor. It's your typical Tecumseh lawnmower carburetor. It'll be easy to replace. Probably just get one a new one of those. Anyway, this will be a work in progress. And... Uh, We'll see uh, how that goes. So today's a nice sunny day. Maybe it'll hit 60 today. It's nice. Thought I'd come out and uh, work on this um, Carter Brothers go-kart. So far what I've done to it is um, the two front uh, wheels were towed out. So basically I uh, adjusted it these screws over here 
I had to disconnect this part and turn it so that this goes in more. That's the adjustment for the toe out or toe in. So now it uh, lined up pretty well. I did, you know, eyeball in it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, what else did I do? Oh, so the thing has headlights. So I connected the battery to it. Battery is dead, of course, so batteries to it. And there's a switch over here. Look at that, huh? Cool. So I'm going to tackle the uh, starter rope recoil starter. I uh, did not want to rivet that out because I was concerned that me putting a bolt and screw in there to secure it after I fixed it, it uh, the ends of the bolt may be protruding too much in, inside that it hits the flywheel. So what I'm going to do is take off the gas tank, take off the air cleaner, and uh, try to take the uh, engine cover off so that I could fix the re uh, starter rope from the inside. I got to take it apart anyway and check it out, you know, and uh, try to salvage the carburetor. Um, this primer bulb stiff and it's not going to really do anything. I mean, it's only like 10 bucks for a new carburetor for the Tecumsehs. They're Chinese uh, copies, but they work well. I've used them before. Linkage looks okay, but uh, and I just uh, checked the spark plug too. It looked okay. I haven't checked it for spark yet because I can't pull on the recoil, you know. But I will uh, try to find a screw to take this. Uh... I believe that there's a screw under there. There's two screws there to get that bracket off, and hopefully this will be able to slide out. Never worked on a go kart, so this is a first for me. But I'm gonna try it. Take that air cleaner off first. Took the air cleaner off. Pretty clean. Two screws, and that one there. Took off the two bolts over there. This bracket comes out and comes out of that area there. That's a gas tank. The fuel line disconnected that. Alright, so it's uh little screw there probably one there take off the cowling now take that off and to disconnect this linkage over here the spring. Okay. Switches. It's good thing I'm videoing this because uh, I want to make sure I know where it goes. Green on the bottom. Gray on the top. There we go. Now I have access to the uh, recoil starter. Throttle cable still attached. I don't want to mess with that. Looks like it may need some kind of uh, replacement wire here. That cable's kind of worn, but. Keep this uh, for now. So I took that out and uh, looks okay. Maybe not. Oh, this way. No, it looks like it's. Um... Yep. Doesn't look like the uh, spring is ca uh, the spring is catching. And this is on there for good, you know. 
I'm gonna have to think, I, I may have to take this whole thing off after all. It sucks. So the way this is designed is that you can't even take this reel out because it's uh not riveted, but you know the bolt the the hollow thing goes in there and then they they tap it real quick so that you can't get it out. And there's no room for me to get anything in there except to cut it out. And uh, obviously I've damaged it for sure. And I've done this before. There's a real no good way to do it. Even if you uh, drilled that out and put a new bolt in there, it doesn't work right. It just doesn't. So looks like I'll have to take out those rivets and take this, this, this recoil starter out. And replace it with another one because uh, I really can't salvage that. Anyway, looks like I'm going to have to order it. I have uh, this Briggs & Stratton one, but the height is not the same. And I don't want to bend that. If I bend that to make the height correct, this part here, which is attached to the area here, cannot be bent. Otherwise, it won't work right. So, kind of stuck. Well, it took some doing. But I slowly uh, compacted that one there, ended up getting this out, took the reel out, and rehooked it onto the thing. Now it's uh, under tension, and uh, I have a screwdriver through there so it doesn't unwind again. Now I'm going to um, take my new uh, pull rope, right? I burned the end of it, so I'm going to to get through the hole here. I'm going to try to do this while I'm holding the camera with one hand and using my dominant hand and getting it through here so you can see. It's a channel. Oh, look at that. I got it. I got it. So I'm going to... I got it through here. See? And I'm going to make a knot there and we'll be good. First try, man. So I made a knot and now it's tight there. So I want to kind of burn it a little so it doesn't unknot. You follow what I'm saying? Kind of burn the end of it there. There, see? Nice and neat. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to uh, take the screwdriver out and it should... S Ooh, I almost sucked the rope all the way in without remembering the other end might get sucked in too. So I'm going to put it under my shoe here so it doesn't get sucked all the way in. I'm going to slowly take this screwdriver out and... Ooh, okay. With one hand, I'm going to chuck it. Slowly release it. Sucking that rope in now. Wow, sucking it all the way in. Look at that. I almost have no rope. I have to uh, pull it out a little bit. Okay, it's going to suck it in. I gotta stop this video before I lose this. Here we go. Look at that. Smooth, man, like butter. Tight tension, too. And I did it all without having to take these rivets off. Great. All right. <sighs> Looks like it works well. And now I'm going to tap that in a little bit more so this is tighter down. So I just uh, connected the uh, that kill off, off and on switch here, the green and the gray. Line up the holes. 
I'll have to figure out the linkage in a second. I kind of forgot. I might I might have to go back to my uh I might have to go back to my uh video check it again because I don't quite remember. Do you guys remember? I don't remember. The way this linkage looks don't look right. I think that hooked under here. Is there a hole over here? Uh, there's a hole there, but I don't think that was the hole. A lot of holes. I don't know. Well, anyway, I'm gonna secure that uh, engine cover on there with the bolts. Got all the screws on there now. Uh, bolts. And I'm gonna put the uh, gas tank on now. Gas tank is on. I'm going to check the uh, carburetor now. Taking off the uh, carburetor is very easy here because the intake manifold is extended. Therefore, you have clear view of the two Phillips screws that just need to be unloosened. Remember to make a mark at this hole right there so that you know where the linkage goes. I'm going to disconnect the um, fuel line over here and the breather tube and remove the carburetor. So I've taken the carburetor off, fuel started squirting out, which is a good sign that the uh, fuel lines are not collapsed or uh, clogged. So fuel was pouring out of that thing. So for sure, fuel would be getting into the carburetor as long as the carburetor is not blocked. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is uh, take that bowl off and check out that jet nut. Check that out, fellas. What that looks like is an oil fuel mix when this is not a two-stroke engine. So you shouldn't be putting oil in there, but it's an oil gas mix. And not only that, look at that float. What the heck? What could have caused the float to bend and warp like that? That's ridiculous. That's trashed, man. I'm gonna have to get a new carburetor for sure. Because I definitely don't have an extra one of these. Um, I've already used all my spares. But this is a bad float. I've never seen anything like that. I'm, I, you know what? I have to take a picture of that. <laughs> I don't know. What could have caused that? You know? No idea. Wow. Hey, you see something new every time, you know? Crazy man. I need a new carburetor anyway. Let's look at that primer bulb. It's stiff. Can't even move it. So yeah, I'm gonna have to get a new carburetor for sure. So I just uh, put the carburetor back and it works. How about that? I didn't think it would work.
really sure how that works. Uh, I thought if you put on the brake, it's supposed to keep going. Yeah. 